Hi, my name's Vanessa from the Just Fabrics workroom. I'm going to show you today how to make a three inch pencil pleat pair of curtains. We are making the curtains in the Telford Lichen organic fabric and we are using a ivory cotton lining. You will also need a pair of snips, a ruler, a pencil, a wooden ruler, preferably one meter long, a pair of scissors, tape measure, clamp, cotton that matches with your fabric, a three inch tape with hooks and some pins. We will start by turning up your bottom hem. So for this, you need 15 centimeters to be turned up. So you'll go along measuring your fabric or sometimes you can just find a nice point that you would like to start it from at the bottom of your curtain. Which I have found on here, there's a nice little dot that I can go along to. And you just, as you go along, just flatten it out with your ruler, measuring at the same time. And you'll find that as you flatten the edge like that with your ruler, you'll get a nice crisp edge, but we will iron it again after. So now I'm just going to press along there with my iron. The next step that we do is you take this back down like so and then you fold it back up on itself up to the crease that you have ironed in. Then fold that back up and then that gives you your nice neat bottom hem. And you can then once again press along it with your iron. Your next step that you need to do is you can turn in your sides and these, again, you need your ruler and we will measure this to be two and a half inches or six centimeters, whichever way you prefer to do it. As you're folding this bit in, it's important to get your ruler and just do a nice crisp edge and pull that bit in like that because this is then going to turn into where your mitre will be and just measure it as you can see I'm a bit more than the six there so we just push that out a little bit like so and we keep going until we get to our six centimeters there we go and then I'm going to once again use my ruler and flatten it down as I go keeping it to my six centimeters all the way along and then once when you've got your six centimeters all the way along again we will give it a press then you repeat that process on the other side next we are going to do our mitre so this is the bit where you need it to be really pressed quite well so what we'll do is we press that and then we open that bit up and you should have a line along here, very faint iron line. So you then get that iron line, you then fold that down into the bottom bit of your hem, tucking this in. And again, once again, if you use your ruler on here, just to get it tucked in quite nicely. And then you just press along there and then you fold that bit back and you end up with a nice crisp mitre like so and then give it a press once you have uh, pressed in all of your mitre you then get your bottom weight and this goes into the corner here and we're just going to pop that there you don't want it right in the very very corner so about a centimetre from the edge and from the bottom there. And then you just sew your weight in. It doesn't need much, just a couple of little tacking stitches over it. And then just sew it at the back to secure it. Like 
looks new. And you fold that back. And again, pop it down into the bottom of your hem and then pop that bit over. And then we're we'll sew along the mitre. So to sew your mitre in, we will I'll just start at the top there. And we're just going to do a running stitch all the way along here. And you just take a little bit of fabric, pop your needle in, and then you go to the next side of the mitre, pop your needle in there, bring that through, and then go to the opposite side, and again, a little bit, bring that through, and you end up, as you can see, you can't see the stitching there. And you continue to do this all the way down to the bottom corner. Once when you get to your very bottom corner, you then just double over it a couple of times just to anchor the stitching in place. Like so. And then to anchor it so that you're not tying it off at that bottom corner, you can pop your needle just in there, take it out through to the other side where your weight and your mitre corner is and then you take it up to the top and just put a little stitch in there and that's where you'll then tie off your cotton. Bring it back down into the corner, and there is your nice hand sewing mitre. Let's again give it a little press, like so. And then you repeat the same over on the other side here. The next step that we need to do is you need to herringbone along the side here to anchor this bit here that you've ironed in and pressed so that you get your nice, nice seams of your curtains. So we do this process by doing a herringbone stitch along here. So you're just going to pop your needle in there, only on that side. Even though I've knotted my cotton, I do like to still sew over just a couple of times just to anchor it in place. Hopefully without getting too many knots. Then you do your herringbone stitch, which is you go through your fabric that you've turned over and then you take the most tiniest of little bits on the other side so that you can barely see it and then that anchors your seam down so that when your curtains are up, you don't find that you've got flappy seams down the side of your curtains. So then the next one, you go into this one here, but again, you only go through this part of the fabric, like so. Then the next one, you go through both, again, taking the most tiniest little bit 
of the face side of the fabric. To the next one, just in that side once again. And then as you can see, this will start your herringbone stitching off and this is then all anchored on to there so as you don't have anything that comes away. you get to the bottom here, once again, you might end up where you've only got half a herringbone stitch, but that's perfectly fine. Put a little stitch through your mitre there, which you won't see because your lining will be covering this bit anyway. Again, just to anchor it down. you should end up with a nice herringbone stitch going all the way down until you get to the bottom there. The next step is to repeat this process on the opposite side. And once when you get to the top, again, just anchor it off there. I'm doing a couple of stitches. Either. The next step that we're going to do is we're going to sew along our bottom hem that we folded in place earlier on. Um, so if you want to get some pins, very often uh, we do normally pin along here, but seeing as it's just a small one width pair and we press it all nicely and our fabric is actually quite a nice stiff fabric and holds its creases really well, but we're pin it anyway just to give you the idea. Pinning it obviously keeps it all in place. And so we start by going into your very corner here of your mitre again, that's there. Do a couple of stitches to anchor it in place so it doesn't come apart. And then we're going to do what we call a running stitch at the bottom, which I will demonstrate to you. This is basically gives you a nice stitch where you can't really see. So you're going to take the tiniest little bit of your main front facing fabric, pull your cotton through, and then you're going to go back in to this bit here. So you're going through your folded part of your seam and you're going to pop your needle back out through there. Bring your cotton through and then lay that down flat again. Put your hand underneath so you can feel when your pin just pokes through to the front side of the fabric. And then again, take the tiniest little stitch, pull your needle through, and then once again, go into your bit that's folded here, like so. You can do this for about a centimetre and then pull that through. And that gives you that effect there. And continue all the way along doing this until you get to the other end. And that is how you will sew your bottom hem. And as you get to the end of sewing along your bottom hem, you just simply put your needle into the very edge of your corner of your mitre at the top and then you just anchor it off again just going through a tiny little bit a tiny little bit of the face fabric and just do a couple of stitches in there and then do your knot and that is then tied off and then get the snips and cut your cotton. That is how you do your bottom hem. Right. Part two of making your curtains is then putting on your linings. So to do this, I have got our 
JF cotton lining here in the cream colourway. And I have already made the bottom hem on it. To do your bottom hem, all you do is you turn it up by 10 centimetres. So you'd fold it up for your 10 centimetres, like so, and then you would press along that 10 centimetre line. And then it's very much the same effect as what we do when we do the hem. You then take that raw edge line down to there and then fold it back up like so. And then you sew along there with your machine and you end up with a nice bottom hem, just like that one there. So after you've done your hem, you then take your lining and we're going to line it up with the bottom of your curtain. Turn it out onto your curtain fabric. This is where we use one of these, which we swear by in the workroom. It's one of these lovely wooden rulers. And as you can see, you can then straighten out your lining. Then once when you've got your lining on, if you take your ruler and what you need is to have it one and a half inches from the bottom of your curtain fabric to the line of your lining and then make sure that this is there all the way along. you get your wooden stick and you can just go along it and just that little excess bit up and then if you like you can put a couple of pins in to anchor it into place if you put it in the stitch line of your lining there then you don't get any unnecessary little pin pricks from next step that we need to do is if you go over to your side. As you can see, I've got some excess lining over here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just trim this down a little bit. So if I get a pencil and with your ruler, just so as it's over about a centimetre away from the edge of your main fabric. And then just, and then you just go along it with your pencil. And then what we do is we just Cut that down. After you've cut your linings down, we then need to line this up neatly with our mitre here. So we want the corners to meet. So you want the corner of your lining to meet up with the corner of your mitre. And then just give that a little measure. And it should be around the one and a half inch, the same as what you had at the bottom. It will vary a little bit, but as long as it's meeting up the corner there, then that's fine. And then if you just grab yourself a little pin and just pop your pin in there to hold that in place, while we then tuck the rest of the lining. And as you can see, this forms a nice line there between the lining and your main body of your curtain. And then once again, just get your ruler, just check what your measurement is there because obviously you like it all the way down to be the same measurement. And then just put your iron. Grab some pins. And we just pin along here just to hold it in place before we sew it along. And then you repeat that same process over on the other side of your lining. Next step is once when you've got that all in place and it's all anchored down ready to sew, we just pop a couple of pins along the top of your curtain to keep it in place. We're going to now sew along the bottom 
of your lining here. So we just join it beyond here where we then put a little stitch just in the very bottom of your lining there. The reason for this is so that you're sewing along here and then that bit there which you fold it back on your lining will be tucked up underneath there giving you a nice neat edge. And again we do a very similar stitch, the running stitch, to what we did on the bottom of this seam here. It says it, you can't see it once when it's all stitched together, making it a nice hand sewn curtain. So I am just going into the top layer of this seam that's been folded up. Then I put my needle in to the lining there, pull it back out and just go along the edge of that seam there. So you're going that seam, that seam, and then pull that through like so. And then again, you're just going to go into the bottom, the top layer of your seam there, pull your needle through, pop it into your seam of your lining, and then pull that through. So once again, you can see I'm in there, out there, in there, out, and you can't see my stitch line at all. I'll just pull that a bit tight, and then you're going to do one again, and then there, take your pin out, because you want to keep this corner nicely in line with your line of your mitre. And just anchor that down with your thumb to keep it in place because obviously you've taken your pin out. And just do another stitch in there just to anchor it in like so. And as you can see that's now nicely anchored into that corner and lining up with your seam. So then you start to go along the side of your curtain. And I'm going to continue doing this all the way up to the top of my curtain. This side over here, we have repeated the same process as what we repeated on the other side, where we just done a running stitch down the lining all the way along to the bottom. So when you get to the bottom of this lining here, take your pin out, just anchor it down with your thumb again so as it keeps lined up. Put your little stitch in there, so as you can see, you're still lined up with your lining and your nice line from your mitre that you did earlier. And then just put another stitch in there, just to anchor that into the corner. And then once again, you're just going to sew a little bit along the bottom of your lining, attaching it to your bottom seam, but not all the way along. and then just finish it off with a couple of stitches. As you can see, on a normal three inch, just lined curtain, we have it so that the bottom of our lining isn't attached to the bottom of our curtain. So we've hemmed this bit here individually, and then we've machine sewn the lining on the linings here, and that then, once when the curtain is up, it gives the curtain the freedom to move around. We've now turned the fabric over to the face side of the fabric. And what we're going to do is we're going to measure the length that we want our curtains to be. So to do this, you need your tape measure and your pins. So you start off by in the middle of your curtain, you pop your tape measure down to the bottom there and we're going to measure this one to one, two, five. So then, take your pins, find the correct measurement on your tape measure, and just pop a pin in alongside it. And then you work from the middle out on either side of the curtain. Just again, popping the pins in at one, two, five, 
and you go along. And then always make sure that you have a pin right on the very end there. Because that's obviously where you're going to be starting when you put your tape on. And once when all your pins are in place, we're using on these curtains a three inch pencil tape. So because the tape is three inches, we need to just trim excess fabric that we've got in the top here. So if I just flip this over, as you can see, I've still got my pins in from where I pinned it to anchor it all and keep it all in place. So I just pop those out and then fold that back. Then if you take your ruler and from the line of your pins, just place your ruler on the top of that pin and then you're going to cut it down by two and a half inches. So if I just mark it there, two and a half, and go along from the top of each pin point, marking it along at two and a half inches, just with a little pencil point. Once when this is done, if you get to your wooden meter ruler again, just then join your lines up, do your pencil line all the way along. And then what we do is we take our scissors and we're just going to cut along that pencil line. Once when we've done that, the final thing that you need to do is we need to now put this tape onto our curtain. So you'll take your curtain to the machine and then you've got your face side of the fabric is down on the table of the machine. Then you've got your three inch tape, which I have lined up there with the top of my pin. And as you can see, that's the bit which I've just cut off that is gonna be tucked underneath the tape. So what I'll now do is I'll fold my fabric over on where that pin is. This bit here I will tuck into here making sure that I have a row of pockets at the very end of the curtain. So obviously you want your nice pin hook to be in that row of pockets as it sits nicely on your rail. Then once when that's in place and my pin is still in there as well that gives me my guideline for my measurement i'm going to just pop this under the foot of my machine just to hold it in place while i just settle the tape down and then i can take that pin out from there then i'll pop my machine on and i'll just sew along the top of here so i'm going along i'm just lining it up with the top of the pin, my tape, and taking the pin out as I go. You're coming towards the end of your tape here. Obviously you can see I've got a bit of excess tape here. So I'm just gonna cut it down to a couple of rows of pockets. And then you repeat the process where you've got your line of your pin there, tuck the tape up like so, just pull it forward a little bit. If you then go to your bottom row of stitching here that you need to stitch the bottom row of your tape onto and then once again you just start off roll the machine back to double over and then sew along the bottom of your tape and as you can see where you're sewing along the bottom you've got the bottom of your curtain there that you folded over from the top so that's all hidden away. When you'll come to the end of it, just make sure that that bit there is tucked in again. Again, just you can either pin it or just hold it with your finger to anchor it in place. And then once when you get to the 
Another end to the gain, just to overstitch it to secure it in place. Once when you've put your tape on to your curtain, get it nice and flat on the table. And then what you need to do is you need to just go to one end of it, pull the strings out from underneath there. So you have your free strings. And then if you just push that a little bit like that and then just tie a knot in there. So it's that, it's nice and secure when you go to the other end because the last thing you want is your strings to come out if you haven't tied them because then it means doing your heading all over again. So once when I've tied it, I will then pop a clamp on there and then I will go down to the other end. If you then do the same and pull your strings out from this side as well, hold all three together like so. Just give it a little push like that so you've got a bit more room to tie your knot. And then once when you've got your knot in place, you can start pulling your heading tape up. And as you can see where we've clamped it, down the other end, it stops any movement and it makes it a lot easier for you to gather up your heading on your curtain. Once you and you're down to the other end when your clamp is, just remove your clamp and then just gather it up a little bit more down at the ends. And as you can see where we tied it, that has secured that end in place and there's no chance of that coming through. You need to tweak the end a little bit just to get it a little bit flat as to how you want the look of your curtains. Just gather it up like so. Measure it to your required measurement, which if you had a pair, you would have half of your track size or your pole size and you would divide you would then add 10 centimeters onto each side so that you've got some spring back so that when your curtains are joined they don't then open out you've got a little bit of give in them so that you don't have that gap in the middle this is just a single curtain so if you're making a single curtain you would just give it an extra five or ten centimeters depending on how full you want the curtain to look and then I've just tied off the end, but I've tied it so it's not all the way through. So that if you need to adjust it, you can just pull it like so. It will gather up a little bit, but it's not a knot that won't. So it's like a slip knot. Just tuck into here in the back of your curtain. So as you can't see it in between the tape and that bit there. So you've got like a little pocket. And then the last part of the process is to get some hooks. One at the end there and obviously one at the end here. And then we normally do it every fifth or sixth pocket depending on how many ring, um, rings or you have on your pole or track that you're popping it onto. And there is your finished made to measure three inch lined pencil width curtain. Thank you very much for watching our demonstration on how to make a pair of three inch pencil pleat curtains. If you would like any more information, please go over to the Just Fabrics website.